Okay, we're at the last works of the flesh. We're going to do revelings. And I'm going to read Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21 again. So we can stamp this into our mind. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, and revelings. And I encourage you guys to look at the other translations for Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. It'll give you a broader idea of what these works of the flesh are. So this is the last works of the carnal, unbelievers' flesh. Revelings. It's excessive and riotous festivities. It's enjoying and taking part in an activity of entertainment without self-control, without self-restraint. It's out-of-control behavior, and whereby observation is a bystander, God's will is put aside, and you'll be able to see that. It'll be obvious. And most of the festive entertainment worldwide is engaged in reveling. Legal, by man-made law, reveling. Lewd, loud music with obscene lyrics, being worshipped with drinks held high in the air, and the body moves to, to intentionally attract a mate, a wild breeding companion for the evening. That's reveling. Yeah, that's hard and raw, yeah. But that's the culture we live in. Sex, lust, idolatry of the body. It's where we live. Commercials on television use same-sex families, homosexual couples with families, happy and carefree, trying to sell you a medicine. Or a dish soap. All sorts of materialism is used with sex. The reveling mind. The major news networks. Look at them. They are mouthpieces for the Vatican. And they make sure there is cleavage and breasts. And a set of legs with a miniskirt on in plain view. To keep you tuned in when the news just doesn't interest you. Now look at mothers in the grocery store. They, they they dress, not all, most. They dress in a manner that, that, in, that invites your eyes to look at them. And it's these men too. They dress in a manner that advertises every muscle that they worship on themselves. They want you to look at them. Sex. And revelings and chaos can be seen everywhere. Activity of entertainment without self-control. Let's read here in Romans chapter 13, verses 12 through 13. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Now, culture and society universally convinces the populations that reveling is normal, that it's fun and cultural to be lewd and drunk and to participate in revelings. And to elaborate, on the Apostle Paul's words, let us walk properly. Walk involves the eyes, the mind. What are your eyes on? What is your mind on? Are you walking properly? Are you reveling in your mind, thoughts, and then pre-planning to do those revelings when the weekend comes about? Hmm? Is your spirit and your heart and soul walking properly? Do you think your thoughts are to yourself? Do you think your thoughts are exclusively to yourself? Is there a lot of reveling going on in your mind? I must ask. The topic on your heart is known. Matthew 9, 4. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why are you thinking evil in your hearts? The public. Those around you don't know your thoughts. Nor can really accurately anybody judge your heart. 
The heart stores one's personal life. If there is a daydream of reveling going on in your heart, the Holy Spirit knows. God knows. Jesus knows. Luke 5, 22. When Jesus perceived their thoughts, He answered them, Why do you question in your heart? So all these works of the flesh germinate out from the cravings and lusts of the individual's heart. The unbeliever does what feels good, a just do it in the road mentality. Until the Holy Spirit convicts humanity through the Word of God, there will be outward behavior of the works of the flesh. There's an example of reveling in Esther chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. In the third year of his reign, he's talking about King Asherius, he gave a feast for all his officials and servants. The army of Persia and Media and the nobles and governors of the provinces were before him while he showed the riches of his royal glory and the splendor and pomp of his greatness for many days, 180 days. And when these days were completed, the king gave for all present in Susa, the citadel, both great and small, a feast lasting for seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. There were white cotton curtains and violet hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rods and silver on a mosaic pavement of porphyry marble, mother of pearl and precious stones. Drinks were served in golden vessels, vessels of different kinds, and the royal wine was lavished according to the bounty of the king, and drinking was according to this edict. There is no compulsion, for the king had given orders to all the staff, all the staff of his palace, to do as each man desired. Queen Vashti also gave a feast for the women in the palace that belonged to King Asherius. So if you haven't noticed, all of these works of the flesh work together. And if one is drowning in drunkenness, they're looking for reveling. Like drunkenness of alcohol, drunkenness of spending money, drunkenness of pornography, video games, drunkenness for entertainment. And as drunkenness is an escape from reality, revelings too are an escape from reality. The heathen unbelieving flesh looks for every opportunity to escape not only reality, but the flesh looks to escape responsibility. The flesh thrives for fun. The flesh thrives for entertainment. The flesh cares not for the seriousness of life. The efforts life's responsibilities require. And the unbeliever, they make their own way in life, don't they? What's there really to live for other than wealth and pleasure, if you're an unbeliever? Now, Paul the Apostle makes it clear in the last days that have been here on earth a long, long time, by the way. In the last days, people will be obsessed with pleasure. Look around it. Just, let, let's read it. Uh, Esther chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, real quick. Queen Vashti, before the king, with her royal crown, in order to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was lovely to look at. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command, delivered by the eunuchs. At this, the king became enraged, and his anger burned within him. So the king, he got irate. He just, he went off at the fact that his queen wouldn't, wouldn't prance around promiscuously in front of the crowd. He was looking for a reveling out of his own queen. Now, in these last days, people will be obsessed with pleasure. Look around at what pleases people today. Entertainment, eating, materialism, 
The unbelieving flesh has got to revel to combat boredom. The believer has Jesus Christ to live for, right? To take orders from and to serve. I tell you, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, just given my opinion, but is it not the number one motivational inspiration in the life of a servant of Christ to get up in the morning knowing you have a king to serve first and a family second and they both depend on you? Isn't that a good feeling? It gets a Christian's sleepy head out of bed quickly, doesn't it? And we must live and reflect our Father. And by my observation, boredom leads to reveling. And if there's no reveling to do, it leads to laziness, unwarranted time off from your job, overeating, purchasing material wants on borrowed money, all while thinking it's normal and morally acceptable. And when a very short and quick window of reality catches up to the reveler's attention, and at that time there's no reveling to participate in, watch those works of the flesh show themselves. Flesh-pleasing reveling. Some translations say orgies. There are so many profitable ways of life to partake in. Play with your children. Walk and talk with your spouse. Weed the garden. Rebuilding a relationship with a heart-hardened sibling. Read the Bible. Mow an elderly neighbor's, neighbor's uh, lawn. Or repent of all your carnal sins and believe the gospel. And ask Jesus Christ into your being and for Him to use you after you surrender the old man. To use you for His glory and good pleasure. Now that beats reveling any day. Because you know where reveling is going to lead you. Okay. So we'll get into the fruits of the Spirit the next lesson. This took quite a while to get through the works of the flesh, but it needed to be taken slow and understood. And I appreciate y'all going through this with me. So the next lesson, we'll get into uh, the works of the flesh. I mean, we'll get into uh, the fruits of the Spirit. And we'll see the characteristics that the uh, Christians is to harbor. Till next time.